right, so this video is going to be um, the spinal cord overview, and then I'll do a video on a spinal cord cross section, a little detail, and then we'll get into the vasculature intracranial with the um, the blood supply coming in, arterial supply, the venous drainage coming out, the sinus system, and then the ventricular ventricular system with CSF. Um, All together, be about an hour of videos. We just got back from camp. We filmed them once. The microphone didn't work, so this is uh, take five two. Here we go. So an overview of the spinal cord. So here's my brain. Everyone loves my cartoon brain. As the brain stem, the medulla oblongata, exits the foramen magnum at the base of the skull, the occipital bone, spinal cord is going to come down and it's going to descend as far as the uh, level 2 3, right? L2 3. Doesn't go all the way down to the base of your tail. It, it stops a little higher than that on the back, higher than most people suspect, because as you grow in your vertebral, column uh, grows with your skeleton around your spine, it'll end up stretching your spine a little, um, uh, stretching your vertebral column around your spinal cord. The spinal cord is a segmented structure. There are 31 segments, right? 31 segments. Each segment gives a left and a right spinal nerve, a spinal nerve. So there are 31 pair of spinal nerves. That means there are 62 spinal nerves altogether. Then there are 12 pair of cranial nerves that exit off the brain stem and the uh, the brain through the skull. Uh, The spinal nerves are all uh, off the spinal cord. 31 pair of spinal nerves to go right and left with each of the segments. When you get down here to the bottom of the spinal um, cord, the nerves that uh, exit, let's say, um, S1 or L5, since the spinal cord stops at the L2 or so level, that nerve is going to come out, travel down in the spinal, the vertebral canal, and then exit. And when you get enough of these nerves at the end of the spinal cord traveling down before they exit the vertebral column, uh, vertebral canal, it ends up having this sort of uh, loose, uh, long spinal nerve structure, which is collectively referred to as the cauda equina. cauda equina or horse's tail. Those are spinal nerves, a little lower. This is one of the reasons clinically you do um, uh, a puncture or lumbar puncture lower because when you press the needle in um, to get some cerebral spinal fluid or for to administer medications or whatever, you're less likely to stab the spinal cord and you sort of nestle in between the nerves that low through the cauda equina. The, uh, the spinal cord uh, has all these segmentations. There's two enlargements, the cervical and lumbar enlargement, because there are greater uh, pools of motor and sensory neurons that correspond to the limb, uh, lower limbs, lumbosacral plexus, and the upper limbs, brachial plexus, entering the spinal cord at those levels, which would uh, increase the diameter a little bit. Um, the spinal nerves are all mixed, meaning they carry both sensory information into the spinal cord and motor information out of the spinal cord and uh, most of them will carry, uh, they'll all carry sympathetic uh, neurons as well from the ANS and then the some of the cranial nerves and a, a, a few areas down by the, um, the sacral level will be your craniosacral or parasympathetic uh, system. So this is the spinal cord overview with the different segments and now I'm going to take one of those segments and do a cross-section drawing in the next video so you can see some of the details of um, the white columns and the gray matter. And remember, so basically the spinal nerves bring sensory information into the spinal cord and up to the brain, and they'll bring motor commands from the brain all the way down and then out. Uh, The spinal cord also is going to be home for a lot of synapse, uh, monosynaptic reflexes, and some motor programs down here we'd have to get into in a more advanced video. So I'll do the cross section next. Splice. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> okay, so um, enter the frame and magnum. Um, here's your brain, cerebellum, pons. Oh, that's an ugly brain. Spinal cord segments, you got the spinal uh, nerves coming off right and left, 31 pair of spinal nerves. Now the relationship to the vertebral bodies is a little, um, just as a little thing to remember. 
Okay, so here's your vertebral bodies from the side, and you've got um, T1, T2, C7, C6, C5. So uh, most of the spinal nerves are going to exit the vertebral canal via the intervertebral foramen, the IVF. This is the space that's bounded by the zygophile facile joint in the back, the ligamentum flavum, and the posterior aspects of the uh, bodies of the vertebra anteriorly and the disc. Okay? Then the interventricular, uh, interventricular foramen is where you're going to see the spinal nerves come out. Spinal nerve for the T1 spinal segment leaves the uh, IVF posterior to the T1 vertebra and comes out and does its thing, but it's close to the disc of the T1 disc because the vertebra sits on a disc. T2 would sit on the T2 disc and that disc would threaten, if injured for a prolapse or herniation or something, the T2 nerve. Right? That's throughout the rest of the body. So if I'm seeing clinical signs um, in an L5 distribution pattern, uh, for L5 nerve root uh, impingement or something, I would look or suspect L5 disc because it leaves the L5 IVF on the right and left and passes in this relationship next to the disc. Okay? In the, it's different in the cervicals. And that's the only thing you have to remember is the cervical spine where the uh, spinal nerve leaves the IVF and comes out past this disc right? So this is the C6 disc, but this is the C7 nerve. C7 nerve. So the nerves are going to be above their corresponding vertebra. So above C6, you're going to have a nerve exit this IVF and be, um, I don't want to say threatened, but could be impacted by this disc, which is the C5 disc, but this is the C6 nerve. So that leaves this space between the transition, uh, the CT junction between cervical and thoracic transition, the nerve that leaves this space that comes around and looks at the C7 disc is the C8 spinal nerve. Right. So they don't uh, correspond directly to uh, the vertebral bodies. If you remember the vertebral bodies, there are seven cervical bodies, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, but they're fused into one, and then three or four um, coccygeal vertebral segments, and then they're fused into uh, one, the coccyx. But when you do the spinal, seg the spinal cord segments, there are eight spinal segments. The spinal nerve C8 corresponds with the C7 disc and comes out between T1 and C7. So the cervical spinal nerve segments and their spinal nerves come out above or superior to the correspondingly numbered vertebrae. Uh, thoracics have 12, the lumbar have 12 segments, there are five sacral segments and one little coccygeal segment just down here at the tip of the spine. Right? So those are the spinal cord segments.